Do you think President Obama is any different than President Bush when it comes to the economy? And if you were in the Congress, would you have voted for the bailouts and the stimulus packages? He's different. I mean, it's, first of all, there's a rhetorical difference. Uh, but we have to distinguish the first and the second Bush terms. They were different. I mean, the first Bush term was so so arrogant and abrasive and uh, militaristic and uh, dismissive of everyone that uh, they offended, they antagonized even allies, close allies, and U.S. Uh, prestige in the world plummeted to zero. Now, the second Bush administration was more... Uh, moved more toward the center in that respect, not entirely, but more. So some of the worst defenders, like uh, Rumsfeld, uh, Wolfowitz, and others, were thrown out. I mean, they couldn't throw out Dick Cheney because he was the administration, so they couldn't get rid of him. He stayed, but the others, a lot of them left, and they moved towards some somewhat more normal position. And Obama's carrying that forward. He's a centrist Democrat. He never really pretended to be anything else. And he's uh, moving towards a kind of a centrist position. He's very popular in Europe, uh, not so much because of him, but because he's not Bush. Uh, so there is uh, the kind of rhetoric that the European leaders and, in fact, the European population uh, tend to accept. In fact, you know, even in the Middle East, where you think people would know better, they're, they accept the illusions. Uh, and they are illusions because there's nothing to back them up. So, yes, he's different from Bush. Same on the economy. Uh, well, you know, the current Obama-Geithner plan is not very different from the Bush-Paulson plan. I mean, somewhat different, but circumstances have changed, so of, co of course it's somewhat different. But it's still based on the principle that we have to somehow, the taxpayer has to rescue the institutions intact. They have to remain intact, uh, including the people who... You know, destroyed the economy. In fact, they're the ones who Obama picked to fix it up. Explain. Like Larry Summers, for example, who's now his chief economic advisor. I mean, he was Secretary of Treasury under Bill Clinton. His great achievement was to prevent Congress from regulating derivatives, exotic financial instruments. Well, that's one of the main factors that led to the crisis. Uh, his kind of senior advisor, one of the first, was Robert Rubin who was Secretary of Treasury right before Summers. His main achievement, many achievements, like what he did to Indonesia in the Third World, but here his main achievement was to lead the way to revoke the Glass-Steagall uh, uh, legislation from the New Deal, which protected commercial banks from risky inve investments. It broke down those barriers. Immediately after uh, having done this, he left the government, they joined Citigroup as a director, uh, and they began to make huge profits, including him, uh, from picking up insurance companies and so on and making very risky loans, uh, relying on the too-big-to-fail doctrine, meaning if we get in trouble, the taxpayer will bail us out, which is just what's happening. Uh, taxpayers now pouring tens of billions of dollars into rescuing Citigroup. Well, these are the advisors who are supposed to fix up the system. Uh, Tim Geithner was you know, right in the middle of this. He was head of the F New York Federal Reserve. So, yes, he was supervising these actions. Now, you know, you, you can argue about whether they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, but are these the people who should be uh, uh, fixing up the system? Uh, actually, the business press has had some interesting things to say about this. Uh, Bloomberg News, you know, main business press, had an article in which they reviewed the records of the people who Obama invited to his economic summit, I think it must have been last uh, November or December, they just reviewed the record, I think there were a couple of dozen of them, he, he, uh, people on the, you know, people like say Stiglitz, uh, Krugman, they were never even allowed close to it, let alone anyone from the left, uh, or labor and so on, given token representation. So they went through the records and they concluded that uh, these people should not be uh, invited to fix up the economy, most of them should be getting subpoenas uh, because of their record of uh, you know, accounting fraud, uh, malpractice, and so on, and helping bring about the current crisis. Professor Noam Chomsky. We'll continue the conversation in a minute. If you'd like a copy of today's show, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. Stay with us.